it looks like a discretionary spending on the increase. How does this compare, though, to the pre-financial crisis levels? Um, you know, uh, if, uh, the way our actual our survey works, Stephen, we actually look at forecasting six months ahead. Or not really forecasting, but the survey is based on uh, six months ahead. So um, actually, every six months, it sort of changed. As you quite correctly pointed out, it's 49% uh, discretionary savings will be maintained. Uh, that's compared to 44%, I guess, uh, the prior six months. Uh, but what is uh, even more interesting than this year is the uh, the actual increase in spending, uh, discretionary spending, that is. It w it's, it's actually 15%, which is actually down 3% uh, from 18%. I think overall it's indicative of what's happening if you look at the MasterCard uh, Consumer Confidence Index, uh, which I think a year ago ref reflected something just over 59 uh, points. And it has decreased to 57.7 uh, points. Well, you know, it's not, it's not a, reflect a reflection of, of, uh, of uh, while the uh, consumer confidence has come down, the overall, uh, I think it, the way we look at it is anything over 50% is hugely optimistic. So it's still in optimistic territory. Albeit They're not hugely standard. optimistic at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not hugely, but still in positive territory. Are you seeing any changes in spending patterns or what the priorities are for spending, what that discretionary money is being spent on? Absolutely, absolutely, Stephen. What, what has happened is if we, if we look at, uh, we're tracking it from, from a, uh, on a six monthly basis. So where do people see that they're going to spend their, their in the next six months? Basically, it's fashion and the accessories still, still at a high level. I think it's at 59%, and it's up from about 27% previously. Uh, that's followed by, um, by um, dining and entertainment, which is also up, and, and then consumer electronics, which is then followed by, I think it is, uh, it, it's, it's fitness, but prior to that, it's upgrading of a house. What, though, is really interesting is if we look at consumer electronics, uh, it's, it, 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 it's, it's reflective, I guess, uh, of the, the global economy as well. Because uh, we have Roger George, who's a, a consumer business industry leader for Deloitte, and he actually indicated that the spending patterns uh, are reflective of anti-recession anyway. Uh, and if we really take a look at uh, a strong rand coupled with um, uh, coupled with the global depression, consumer electronics coming into the country are, are really something that uh, that consumers are really targeting on. And I suppose we're getting all of these new fangled items, aren't we? We're getting new iPads coming onto the market. We're getting um, electric reading devices and all sorts of things that people would want to be spending on. Absolutely. And again, Roger pointed this out correctly to us that it's actually enticing people to actually go out and, and, and get all these uh, items. Interestingly, though, I see where people are cutting back on tra uh, discretionary spending travel white goods and buying a car or a motorbike. Now, why would you be cutting back on travel when the rand is as strong as, as it Absolutely. is? Absolutely. It, it seems somewhat contradictory. What we do have to actually look at, if we look at a year prior to that there and the, the six-month outlook at that point in time, travel was at 3%. It's somewhat doubled to 7%, albeit that it's still at a low level. It's still reflective of, 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 of a spending pattern altogether there. So there is, there is, the, there is a change in behavior um, or there's a perceived change in behavior albeit that it's, it's still amongst the lowest within the, the, um, uh, the rating categories. Now, apart from what people are spending on, you also look in the survey at how people are saving, and it looks like fewer South Africans planning to increase their savings, down from 42% in the previous survey to 31%. Is that concerning to you that people are saving less, particularly in a, a, an economy like South Africa, where savings are so low already? Uh, absolutely, and again, as we said, it's it's an outlook, so six-month outlook. And absolutely, if we see it, that it has come down from 42%, it is of is of concern. And what is even more concern uh, is is um, is that 31% uh, 31% of the uh, of those surveyed said that they're going to actually decrease their spending, which is up from 23% over the previous six months. I think again, if you come down, it is probably a reflection of the entire economic uh, environment, and of those that had surveyed as well. Well, I think it was 69% uh, uh, those that said that they would either increase or maintain their savings over the next six months uh, said they would do it because of the economic situation. Uh, so, yeah, it's reflective of that. Do, uh, do you have any stance? I mean, is it something you look at? Uh, how much spending on a MasterCard is discretionary spending and how much spending is on essentials such as food, such as paying your bills? Yeah. Uh, from, from a MasterCard perspective, Stephen, it's actually quite difficult to do that there because uh, what what is considered luxury for someone is also considered a necessity for somebody else there. So it's actually difficult for us to to actually split this through our, our the data that we have get uh, we do we do get. We do sometimes have the ability to understand which is uh, luxury travel uh, luxury travel versus uh, necessary travel. But 
uh, holistically, it's actually a quite a difficult task to actually split it out because of consumer preferences. You've also for the past day a couple of surveys been including other African countries in the survey, Nigeria, Kenya and Morocco. Are the results widely different between any of those economies? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's, it's the third year running that we've looked at Nigeria, Kenya and Morocco uh, and we've included in South Africa. For me personally, it's within Middle East Africa, so there's actually 10 countries that we looked through. But coming specifically to the four countries that we're talking about, or the three countries excluding South Africa, uh, there have been some changes there. We've seen that there's been a huge increase in discretionary spending. Uh, for uh, for uh, Nigeria, Kenya, and Morocco is somewhat flat in that in, in entire survey. But what's really interesting is how the discretionary spending is going about there. If we look at Kenya and Nigeria, which is uh, uh, closer to that of, of South Africa, we'll see that they're actually spending a lot more on in terms of tuition and uh, continuing education. Uh, with uh, with a difference there being uh, consumer electronics and fashion and accessories with Kenya and Nigeria con uh, respectively. Um, one other thing that's really important that came out uh, within this uh, survey is uh, the actual savings, uh, where Nigeria and uh, and Kenya, uh, the planned uh, consumers who are planning to save over the next uh, six months, is far surpasses that of South Africa. So that's also interesting for us to actually see.